the fourth was the great emperor of Ethiopia from 1872 to 89. During his time as emperor, he faced many challenges in order to protect the land and religion of Ethiopia. He faced crucial threats from countries such as Egypt, Italy, and Sudan. Johannes attempted to make peace with these countries and through extensive communication, worked with allies to fight back threats. In 1874, Ismail Pasha, a leader of the Egyptians, started invading the northern parts of Ethiopia, Bogos and Karen with his people. Knowing Johannes was oblivious to this, they continued to invade the port of Mesawa, which Ethiopia used to trade with other countries. Once Johannes did start to notice, he sent letters, envoys, and tried relentlessly to make peace, despite the several trials. Then he contacted allies, such as Britain, but due to the protection European powers had on Egypt, he was rejected the support. Furthermore, Pasha's malicious lies confused allies from the truth. Thus, as Egypt progressed to occupy more regions of Ethiopia, Johannes concluded that it was up to him and his people to defend his land. But before just declaring a war, he came up with a strategic plan that would surely guarantee victory. His plan was to encircle the Egyptians from all directions so they would have no way of escaping. In Battle of Gundat on November 16 through 17, 1875, his plan stopped the Egyptian advance into Ethiopian territory. Even though hundreds of Egyptians had died, the threats returned to Ethiopia four months later. Angered at their defeat, the Egyptians returned with a better equipped army of 15,000 people, this time led by Pasha's son. They wanted to conquer over Ethiopia, but little did they know what was waiting for them. Once Johannes heard of their return, he sent a proclamation to all the citizens of Ethiopia. Talat ye Ethiopian duala idnet le atafa matwaat. Anamaum hezba chinen ve bar nazkan ve bar le magzat. Chetu chachin ka kabar le maulad. This time, 60,000 combats were distributed all across Ethiopia. Johannes told the soldiers to never underestimate their opponents because they were oblivious to what they had up their sleeve. Deciding to follow the same plan as the previous war, the battle raged on from March 7th through March 9th, 1876. The Battle of Gora left several dead and wounded but the Ethiopians completely annihilated their opponents, leaving only 500 Egyptians left. Instead of just letting them flee, Johannes imprisoned the Egyptians and ordered a double cross tattoo to be done on Hassan Pasha. A few years later, in the 1880s, the Egyptians got captured in the middle of Sudan in an attempt to occupy their land. And since Egypt was protected by the Anglo, the English sent William Haywards to request assistance from Johannes and his people. Hence, Egypt, Ethiopia, and England made a treaty called the Haywards Treaty, which included Egypt's promise to have peace and return all the land, such as Bogos. But Johannes also wanted the port of Masawa to be handed back. So, the Britons intentionally confused Johannes to make him think they had agreed, which worked. Fortunately, Johannes and the Britons surreptitiously freed the Egyptians out of Sudan and into their land. Lastly, in case of any future disagreements, Egypt and Ethiopia both agreed to have Britain as a third party. Although Britain wanted to take part of the share to be equal, and a year later, Britain completely tore apart their treaty and gave the portion of Masawa to Italy. Britain wanted to weaken France's colonizations and strengthen Italy's. 
Hence, in 1885, Italians took period advantage and continued to occupy lands near Massawa as well. Although, Johannes dispatched letters of peace to Italy, but they had no sense of consideration. He then sent letters to Queen Victoria to talk to the British general, but she replied with, you should rather make peace with your Italian friends. Feeling frustrated, Johannes sent Ras Halula to fend off Italians in Sahati. Even though that may have worked, Italians returned to Ethiopia in 1887. Therefore, Johannes sent yet another proclamation, but at this time requesting all the men living in the land of Ethiopia to help fight Italy. Ethiopia is a very good thing. It 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 is a very good thing. Hearing this proclamation, Ethiopians felt highly motivated to fight under all generals and Johannes for the sake of their motherland, Ethiopia. After getting thousands of volunteers, Johannes felt confident and fought the Italians at Dovoli on 16th of January, 1887. After the tragic battle, more than 400 Italians were dead and 82 were left wounded. This left a great victory for the Ethiopians and loss for the Italians, whom were treated for the moment. Sadly, near that time, the Mahdists noticed the Egyptians' escape and found out it was all because of Johannes. For this reason, they planned to go to Ethiopia in goals for killing the emperor. In 1889, the Dervish army stormed in and started to destroy everything, causing an enormous riot. This riot not only destroyed monasteries, but had many priests and other innocent people beheaded. When they had started, Minilik went north from Shaw to Matamma to fight the Sudan. While he was doing so, a rumor came across to Johannes saying that Minilik had betrayed which was far from the truth. Following the rumor, Johannes received a letter describing the crucial things that the Dervish army had done to the Ethiopians. Hearing all this, the son of which he did not want to believe, Johannes sent a letter to the Mahdis declaring he was coming to them. Though he had said this, the Mahdists did not just sit around and wait. Instead, they continued to invade parts of Gondor, while Minalik was still in defense. The Emperor knew the battle was not going to be easy, so he called up all his generals and men to fight amongst the soldiers. During March 1889, the Battle of Golabat was going hideous until the Emperor decided to fight with the soldiers. After deciding to join them, the emperor was shot directly in the chest and fell towards the ground. Right after, a few of his generals picked him up and heard his last breaths, which were, get me water. But since they were in a deserted area, there was no route of water to be found. So then Johannes pulled out his prayer book to St. Mary called Widasi Maria. And as he started reciting the prayer, a sprout of water miraculously came from the ground. Johannes sipped from that before his death. Woefully, the Mahdists were very pleased by this and went to his corpse to chop his head off and give to their leader. The reign of Johannes instills many lessons for us, some of them being how he strived to protect the land and religion by communicating to region rulers to have peace among another and prepare for defense for foreign threats. For example, when Britain deceived Johannes with the Hewa Treaty, the Emperor was able to communicate among town officials and citizens to fend off the Italians. Furthermore, he was a pacifist and made war his ultimate resort. Therefore, with his great belief in democracy, federalism, and the sovereignty of the nation, Johannes was able to resist enemies right until his death. Afterwards, under Minilik's rule, Ethiopia continued Johannes' legacy and made great strides in his leadership, such as winning the Battle of Adwa.